know if you can see that, but it's my water table and uh, that's really good, but it's throwing chips and water everywhere. Even though I do actually have that sort of containment system, um, I'll wait till the job is done and I'll show you. I have some ideas for like a like a containment thing to rent so many chips and water. Because I would like to turn the water out, man. This. But then it throws water everywhere. Alright, so I already have some ideas. When this job is done, I'll uh, show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, I was getting so much chip throw back. I even got like this cheapo, like low profile vice. I mean, it's not nearly as good as like one of my other vices, like the six inch. One of those like angle lock, I think it's called angle locking, like the knockoff current vices. Um, so, um, yeah, it throws chips everywhere. Um, so I thought maybe to try to extend the, the things up a couple more inches this way. Um, but then the, I saw most of it because like the, 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 it's, the, ch the bit is actually pulling the water up. So it's like pushing it up, you know? So I thought, you know, what if I design a, like a clamped on thing where I can adjust it with a screw to change the height? Um, that way I can bring it down to where I need it to, to, to go. Um, so what I was thinking, well, I need, I, I, need to, I need to be able to take it off to change bits or also to like adjust it, you know? But what I was thinking is to 3D print something, like a collet way to grab onto this thing. But then maybe use like a, like a two liter bottle so it's clear. So instead of it being 100% 3D printed, we know where it's, you know, you can't see what's going on so much. Make it out of like a, like a two liter bottle, like a like clear uh, PETG, you know, the plastic, polycarbonate, where they use. You know, just cut a slice off. And I'll put like a ring adapter on the bottom to keep it all, you know, from bending around. And then I'll put like a, an adapter piece so I can screw up and down. And hopefully that will pick up a lot of that debris coming up this way. I can see it's coming up in a pattern like this, over, you know, and so it's spilling water everywhere. Um, and I have the, the expense of coolant in there, you know, I don't want to be losing a lot of the coolant. So, um, all right, um, yeah, that's really, I mean, besides, I, I, mean, I love this. This thing is, this router table is a $600 offer up score that I've converted to Mach 3 and did all the stuff on it and rewired it. and. If you're not familiar with my channel, you know, all the rewired everything, you know, but because it's such a heavy CNC router, you know, it's, it does really good cuts. Like this, these are like incredible, um, two flute, uh, carbide end mill. But, uh, all right, so I to go to the store, I'm going to buy a two liter bottle and then I also need to find a way to maybe, you know, maybe put a hole in the side of the, uh, the two liter bottle. That way I can get the, uh, coolant through it closer to the bit, you know? Um, I'll have to figure that out. Like some kind of way of being able to get this through the the side of the two liter. You know, put a hole through it maybe. That way it's right kind of like in the position where I need to go. Um, kind of sucks is this thing actually, the, this thing doesn't move with the, with the spindle. I guess I could do that though. I could, I could move this. Oh, well, I don't know. Right now it's fixed mount. So, I mean, maybe I can get under, I guess I can get underneath the, Alright, we'll have to mess with that because I can always adjust the thing will be adjustable height. Um, but yeah, just being able to cut the pick up those chips and water. So alright, let me go to Fusion 360 and I'll uh, see if I can figure something out. Alright, here it is, all printed out. So this morning I cut out this two liter. So I just went to the store and bought like a this is like a buck fifty for some tiki punch, some like knockoff. Hawaiian Punch. I think it's like Shasta brand. But all right. Um, so this is actually kind of a headache to get off. I mean, I guess I could get it off with like some kind of like WD-40, but it's not a big deal to me. Maybe I'll get it off later. Eventually, I think it might come off on its own. Um, I think that just goes like that. And then I actually have here the two M2 or M10. I guess we'll thread it here. I actually chose plastic because I didn't want to mar up the spindle with metal ones. So I hope I can get this. Well, Throw it in there. And then, uh, so those are M10. So you can either use metal or these plastic ones. Like I said, I don't want to scratch up the spindle, so. Um, I actually have two for redundancy. And then I'm going to just slide this in like that. 
it's a, I, I, I purposely have it really tight. Put the white part on the back because I want it to be tight. Then I super glue this in there. You know, if this doesn't actually work out, then I can always get like a piece of a piece of a like clear acrylic, you know, which would be more rigid. I mean, I might do that. I don't know, but this, we'll see how this works out. Um, like I said, it's only buck fifty, so. And this is the retainer to kind of keep everything on there. So I think I'm going to do is to get the glue in there, the super glue. I'm just going to kind of like open it up a little bit, maybe like that. And then get some glue on there, a tab glue. And then, uh, same thing for that. It's got a slide in there nice. All right, so there it is, the machine. I also decided to take this black stuff I had on there. Um, came with the machine, but it's this machine originally was for like engraving uh, stone. That's why I had a water table. Um, get that off, but yeah, take a look at this. So I already tightened it. So the second one is it really one is probably sufficient, but I wanted some redundancy. Typically, I wouldn't do this one hand, but when I pull this up, I can still get to the thing to take the call off. And when I get it down, yeah, I could go lower, but I really just wanted to be able to cover this nut right here, because if I go any higher than that, then it, I could bump into my part, I guess. But the main thing I'm thinking is just because it, it wants to pick up the chips and water going this way. I'm hoping to be able to get some of that from flinging over. Uh, this actually makes a huge difference. And we're good a little bit, but I can't go all the way down because the uh, I'm drilling, helping the handle. I'm just thinking of this, I might make a longer one too. Like, maybe do once again with a longer piece of plastic too. Like I said, it really depends on the depth. If I'm doing facing, if I'm just doing a facing operation, that can go real low. But I'm actually doing a really deep cut. total success. And actually, I'm even using a vise that's higher up. Uh, so before I had like a low profile vise that's not really suitable for machining. Um, you know, one that doesn't actually, it's not angle lock. Um, all right, so here is the chip stuff that I normally get. That's kind of how I used to get it before. I, I didn't clean that up on purpose. I wanted to see the difference. But um, yeah, I mean, this would normally be completely covered in chips. I mean, there's some minor flakes here and there, but I mean, it was a total mess before. Water on the ground. Um, and actually, a lot of these chips are from before. So, um, yeah, huge success. Also, what I realized that too is um, when I, 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 I tilt the coolant line up like this, it almost like it, um, when it, it, it well, creates a lot of foam, but it splashes down, right? But it also prevents, since the water is coming down on all angles, it almost like it picks up even more chips. So I'm not going straight into the actual hole, but up here, and it's creating almost like a washing effect and prevents chips, well, I mean, it seemed like more even, it was picking up more chips coming down, so. Pretty cool, man. So, um, yeah, I might try different variations of the, the length of the thing, but yeah, this thing's awesome. Works great. All right, uh, I'm gonna upload it to Thingiverse, and uh, if you guys want it, you have an 80 millimeter spindle. Uh, which is kind of standard for these these uh, CNC routers. You know, the 2.2 kilowatt, 400 hertz, you know, um, three-phase spindle. Um, all right, so I got to go back now and drill some holes. This is for a ball screw for one of the CNC machine over there. Um, it's a ball screw mount. So I go back and drill the six holes around it with a thinner bit. Yeah, it's a little tricky because I'm going 40 millimeter down through. So, all right.